Hello world, my name is Tim Rossiger. Welcome back to another daily game dev video. Today we're talking about the minimum viable game. Uh, basically, how it works, how to reduce your iteration time, how to make more games, how to make better games uh, by doing less work. And that's what an MVP helps you do. So today we're talking about minimum viable game, which is a modification of the minimum viable product uh, idea, which uh, as far as I know originated in uh, a book called uh, The Lean Startup, which I have here. Um, it's basically the concept of what is the minimal thing that you can do to get a viable uh, product and this is something we've talked about a ton on the channel i have multiple videos on this but i i kind of wanted to show you a little bit about how uh to think about it how to kind of wrap your head around it and like what's a good approach to kind of take to making your game because here's the thing game dev is a very technical process and there's a lot of work that goes into it. you got art you got sound you got programming you got design you got all this stuff you got tons of stuff and you could be at that forever. And I've noticed on Feedback Fridays on my Twitch channel, which is the first Friday of every month, but you can go to twitch.tv slash Tim Russwick and come hang out with me later today. Uh, won't be Feedback Friday, but we can hang out. I've noticed on those Feedback Fridays, a lot of people send me what are essentially tech demos. They're not games. They're tech demos. They're, they're things. They're collections of features. They're 3D worlds of stuff. Right, but there's there's not games there, and I I play quite a bit of these actually, and I you know I give feedback, and everybody's at a different spot. I'm not trying to rag on anybody for doing this. I know any programmer at any point has built some kind of tech demo. We all tend to do that, but uh, one of the things about that is you can kind of lose sight of what the project's supposed to be, right? And what what a lot of people end up doing. Uh, when they're when they're building something and this is my this is my bootleg uh, <laughs> Way to showcase this we're gonna we're gonna be in Photoshop and I'm gonna mess with layers here um, how most people uh, Look at this is they think that okay. I got I want to build the car, right? So they still just start adding features to it, but but the problem here's the problem right here this little spot right here this little spot right here this spot right here You know how long this takes you know how long this takes, okay? This stuff, you know, it's this is easy to do. These little windows and stuff, okay? But the the jump between here and here, <laughs> depending on the game, but most games, this is a big jump, okay? This is a big jump. You want to you want to actually let's let's put this in real world terms. This is what we're dealing with, okay? We're dealing with we're dealing with this. We're dealing like this is like way over here. Okay. This is where you're at, right? This is where you're trying to build and this is where you're trying to go. And this is like way over here. So, uh, it's interesting when you think about it, like if, if you know, you're trying to build this thing, you, you know, the minimum viable thing that you need, right? Uh, most people, they go straight here, but it takes a long time to build this. It takes a long time to build this. And the things that make a great game usually come down to feedback and iteration and changing things over time, right? Like, and the problem with this direction is that you don't know what's good about your thing. And so you could do all this work and you could get to this shape of vehicle or of game and you find out this is completely wrong, right? You find out this, this wasn't really what people wanted anyway. You people might've wanted some like, uh, some crazy, like, I don't know. They might've wanted demon horns on their, their their car right they might have wanted something but whatever it is you, you spent all this work and sure you could add them on there but now they're latched on right you got to like bolt them on and a bunch of stuff and it can get it can get complicated and and if this was the goal and it took you the majority of the time just to get here like you are missing out on a lot of stuff you're missing out on a lot of feedback a lot of improvements that you could have made right and that's where this comes in so this is, uh, you've probably seen this image on the internet. It's pretty popular. I'm just drawing on top of it. <laughs> uh, this, is a, this is kind of a different approach on how you might approach your minimum viable game, right? I'm under the belief, I'm under the belief, if that makes any sense. I'm of the belief that uh, you should always have a playable build out at any time. And that's not always easy to do, but I develop in public, right? I develop on Twitch. I develop on YouTube, I develop on stuff. Uh, I'm a firm believer of that. I'm a firm believer of, of constantly having something to show, constantly having something to share, because it helps anybody at any time give me feedback, and I don't want to turn that off. And here's the cool thing about 
this approach uh versus like uh this approach right here right so like this takes a long time but maybe you could do this a lot faster right it's not going to be as cool this is not going to be as cool as as this is right but this is going to take you like a, a tenth of amount of time as as the car will right and then you can take that basic thing right like if you're making an open world game this might this might just be uh the running and moving right this might just be the running jumping moving and stuff like that just to get the, the character controller and all that stuff right and then you add on something else if you're making a an fps this might be the shooting if you're making a uh, strategy game this might be you know, i don't know laying out a grid or whatever and having moving having turn-based people move on a grid um the basics right and then for let's put it in the context of strategy games because that's what i'm making uh, once you got the people moving on the grid, then you can add in uh, a bunch of characters, right? Once you add a bunch of, once you add a bunch of characters, then you can give the characters abilities, right? This sound familiar? You've been following the channel. This is exactly what I'm doing. This is exactly what I'm doing. We're on phase three right now. We're adding in abilities, right? After we add in abilities, uh, then we've got wrap up and polish, and then in August, August of 2020, we launch Battleborn Tactics to Steam. Right, so that's kind of how we're doing it in phases, and I say we, but I just mean me in stream. I have a habit of saying we because I'm so collaborative with all of you lovely people. Uh, but I think this is an interesting way to think about it, right? Because game dev is so technically complex sometimes, and again, depending on the game, but like there's a lot of work that goes involved, and you don't want to get stuck in this gap. This is where most people are at. Most people are right here, and and I don't blame them because this is a big jump. Right? So if you're constantly building in smaller chunks and you reduce your iteration cycles, what you end up doing is you make a better product every jump, every leap along the way. Right? Because if you if you have a bunch of roller skate people, they can give you feedback like, hey, I like this. It's a it's a good transportation device, but you know, it's a pain to take off and like it doesn't, you know. Uh, I wouldn't plan this far ahead, and I definitely don't plan this far ahead. I don't. I don't even use a game design doc, which uh, that's a whole another subject. Like you know, some people have to use it for teams and stuff like that. Uh, but I take it one step at a time, and I I build this thing, and I get feedback on this thing, and then I end up working towards the next version, and then I build the thing based on the feedback of the previous thing, and then I work to the next version, and I build that version based on the feedback of the previous thing, and so on and so forth, and um. Sometimes I don't always know what this is going to look like, right? I don't always know what this is going to look like, but uh, I try to keep on moving and I try to try to move forward, even though it's it's a little uncertain sometimes. Um, it's the best process that I've found to kind of make something that I think is interesting. And and almost always when I take this approach, this ends up being way better than when I when I plan this out, right? <laughs> For whatever reason, maybe I'm a bad game designer. I don't know, but whenever I follow the feedback that people give me every step of the way, uh, I make up something that is completely different than I thought usually, but it's usually much better than I would have thought it would be. So that's minimum viable game. I hope you like the concept. I hope you can use it in your games. Uh, I want to say thank you to these people right here. They help me keep doing what I'm doing every single day of the week with another daily game dev video for you. It's the end of the week, which means you're not going to get a video until Monday, uh, but I'm glad that you're here. And I hope this video was helpful. If you want your name on this list, you can head over to patreon.com slash gamedevunderground and lots of tools there to help you build, finish, and launch better games. You can also join our Discord, uh, which has game developers from all around the world. You can come hang out with me and them, uh, us, and uh, we can make games together. Also, I'm streaming on Twitch today. Come hang out, twitch.tv slash Tim uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, come hang out and I'll be there and we can talk in person, uh, in person on the internet kind of in person not really in person in on the internet but live where we're both sitting alone in our room never mind just come hang out with me on the internet okay i'll see you next week bye bye everybody